Hey guys, it's Morgan Lindsay here at the Line Hotel to meet up with one of LA's heroes, innovators, all around good guy, Roy Choi. <laughs> <laughs> Roy Choi is a true LA icon, which means if I'm going to meet the man, then I better study up. Pre-interview, I'm headed to a mini tour of Roy's nearby restaurants. First, Chago in Chinatown for a bit of LA soul in a bowl. Chago was Roy's first sit-down restaurant, and it's the perfect mix of all the ethnic flavors that make up the city. Mm, doesn't that look good? Five happiness stars, hands down. Next, I headed to Three Worlds Cafe, a joint community effort that empowers local high school students by giving them culinary and business skills through working with Roy in the cafe. This spot brings tropical flavors to South Central with the most hyped about item being the Dole Whip, served exclusively by none other than Disneyland and Three Worlds Cafe. With all the talk surrounding it, I had to try it. The verdict? Basically, fun in a cup. After that food coma, I made my way over to the Line Hotel to meet up with Roy at his latest establishment, Pot. This interview was such a treat. You have a book out called LA Sun, so obviously your roots run really deep. So what was it like growing up in LA and around LA for you? Um, it was beautiful, you know, um, but there was a lot of ups and downs, you know. I come from an immigrant family, uh, which probably a lot of people who watch this come from, and uh, we were trying to figure America out, so I went with my parents along that journey. So um, I was a latchkey kid, they were working the whole time. We moved like every two years, um, grew up my elementary school years in LA, and then moved in Chicken High to Orange County, so I got a taste of both counties. Yeah. And um, you know, hopped back to LA in college and stuff, so um, I mean, I love it, but you know, in the same way, as much as I loved it, it kind of destroyed me as well. Um, I know a lot of young, uh, young homies coming up know how what I'm talking about as far as like I reached a point in my mid-20s where I just I couldn't live here anymore like if I did like yeah like I was just going down the wrong path and um, there was just there was just I just wasn't in the right state of mind everything was kind of weird so I bounced I bounced in New York and I just like kind of I peaked out so um, but then I came back you know, I didn't think I'd ever make it back to LA, to be honest. I was really? going to visit my family and stuff. Like, it was literally to the point where, you know, I had moved. And, um, you know, and, uh, but I came back and I came back in a really weird way. I came back and, you know, started Kogi with my, with my crew. How did you get into food, becoming a chef? Uh, well, I grew up around food my whole life. Um, I grew up in a restaurant, in a Korean restaurant. And um, my mom was an incredible cook. She still is, but like, she cooked like there was no tomorrow. I mean, like I didn't grow up with cereal on the table. Like I grew up right. with like five different stews and you know and different braised meats and vegetables and you know. So um, you know, you open our refrigerator and it looked like 99 Ranch Market. You know, like it's crazy. Like, <laughs> I know what that every looks single, like. Yeah, you know what it looks like, right? Yeah. Every single day, you know, it, like it like it never depleted. So I was around it. I was around the restaurant. I did all my homework in the kitchen. Um, I worked in high school uh, to get my car and like fix up my car. I used to work in restaurants. Yeah. I worked all throughout high school and then I left it. I left it in college and I thought I'd never return. And then um, I hit kind of rock bottom that point in where I said I left LA. And that's when I moved to New York to start cooking. How, you said cooking knocked on your door, but how did it like but it's tough. It's tough. Like, on, to you? On, the, on that point, it's tough when that stuff comes late. Like a lot of, a lot of artists are, are fortunate because they find it early, you know, like they find it in high school or they find it early, right out of high school, um, and, the, and then they're just perfecting their, their exactly. craft or their form as they grow old, older. Something to bank on. Yeah, but like when you don't know and you don't find it and, and you just think like everything else you can't fit into, it wears on your whole consciousness, it, it, it fucks you up. Yeah. Um, but that's how cooking found me, is like, I was literally at my last rope, and, um, and, I, and I picked up a knife and I started like cooking, and I started just, I let go a little bit. I let go, I stopped thinking, stopped trying to be a good kid, stopped trying to live up to anything, yeah. I just cooked, and I realized that that was the way I was making people happy. That was a way that I could express a lot of these things that I was feeling, whether it was my anger, whether it was, you know, my hip hop soul, whether it was like my expression, is like these things that I couldn't express 
um, I was able to just cook something and then you know feed it to you, and then like everyone got it, everyone understood. How do you come up with the ideas for the other restaurants? Are they like people pitching it to you, or do you just wake up one day and be like, oh, I need to make a Caribbean type of restaurant, or I need to make? I think it's a mixture of three or four things. Um, one, through Kogi, I unlocked um, freedom in my life. Like, mm -hmm. I don't have a boss. I don't have to. I don't have to exist to please anybody right. other than the honest truth of what I'm trying to express. So there's that freedom. And then I really care about like about people. You know what I mean? Like um, before Kogi I couldn't really express that a lot. You yeah. Know? Especially being a dude. Like can't really say like Yeah. Like I care about you. I wanna feed you. I wanna take care Especially of you. Especially in wanna, a corporate setting. Yeah, I wanna I, I wanna do everything I can and extend myself and my hospitality to make yeah. you make your life and nurture your life and make you you know, give everything I, I have to you, you know. Um, but I realized through Kogi is that um, even though I was born in a, as a male, you know, and, and, and a young dude in L.A., I have kind of a grandmother spirit, Yeah. you know. So, you know, our bodies are just shells. So I think right now in this form, I'm kind of like a grandmother, and Kogi allowed me to really realize that. So what I do yeah. is, I guess, long story short, is I... I trust that spirit, and I try to create to environments that. where when people come in, they know that we're here to take care of them. So whether it's A-Frame, Sunny Spot, um, Hot, Kogi, Chego, um, and then I, tr spot I trust too. my dreams, yeah. Something I wanted to ask you is what message you have for my generation, because mm -hmm. we're all looking at people like you, Eddie Wong, David Chang, like you guys are like the chefs, the pop culture icons for us. What message do you have for us to help to change the food industry or just what we see around us in our neighborhoods, especially here in LA? Well, you know, I'm around a lot of people from your generation every day because of Kogi, you know, like, yeah. um, you know, it's weird, like, I don't know, I walk a lot of different worlds. What I, what I want to put the responsibility on you guys is like, help us make delicious food cool, you know? Help us make it a part of your culture and a part of your living so that it can be passed down to the next generation. Because you guys are a bridge as well. Right. If, if you don't start to eat better and place importance on things, um, then we're just gonna repeat cycles. And it's, it's okay to like make food cool because like, um, look at countries like Singapore, Bangkok, uh, Singapore, Thailand, Korea, Manila, the Philippines, um, you know, in Europe, um, all throughout the world, you know, like young youngsters, like 16, 17, 18 year old yeah. kids are hooking up, you know, and, they, and they're going to find the one amazing noodle shop or like, you the know. Foodie revolution. Yeah, food corner or whatever. And, it, and, it, and it's cool, to, it's a part of culture to, to want to eat great food. You know, so I would say, like, help us, you know, make that important in our lives, you know, as important as an energy drink or as your phone or, you know, as vape pens, you know, <laughs> as, as splits, you know, as music, as headphones, you know, make, make food as important as those, those you know, Things, and then what will happen is that food will nourish us and then you know I don't know exactly let's yeah, make yeah, the yeah. nourishment a priority again yeah why yeah. not you know why not we eat, you know we're eating shit man we're eating shit in our schools we're eating shit out in the street you know and, and we're still like thriving and we still got style and we're still doing our thing imagine if like we had good food we did that so Roy thank you so much oh, for your time you. appreciate it man drop so much knowledge you. thank you I'm always so wary about time. like how how much to divulge especially with like oh youth, I had you, you three know, pages like, I, long I wanted I'm everything. afraid I'm gonna bore y'all but you know I got you know I'm just trying to you know express things and, you, and you have so you many outlets in which you express you have your book you have your Twitter your blog I have been seeing you on the blog lately but you have your restaurants yeah. that you talk to us through every single day, and I'm so thankful for it, and I'm sure my generation is as well. 
and just thank you for being here and being Roy Choi, the grandma <laughs> yeah, inside. Yeah, grandma. This grandma, right? <laughs> That's him on the inside. Guys. I guess my only outro would be that. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. It's rare that you get to meet and talk to someone who fills you up with so much wisdom and sparks so much discussion and still leaves you wanting more. I guess in a sense, it is the same way that Roy's food works. Give them wholehearted, amazing nourishment, food to enjoy, challenge, and think about, and they'll be back for more. Roy infuses these elements into all he does, and I think as the next generation, we can use the same to forge our own fresh path. Next week on East Beats Morgan, singer, fashionista, and zine creator, this girl does it all. I'm hanging with Thelma Aoyama. One of the most requested and suggested artists to have on East Meets Morgan, without a doubt, has been Jay Park. He is a modern-day renaissance man who has set a standard of what it means to find success as an Asian-American outside of the U.S. From acting to music, he does it all. Through his obvious talent, hustle, and vision for himself, he's gone beyond the titled artist and started his own...